everybody and welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about the end of superheroes. This is still in the golden age of comics. I know that I haven't moved from the golden age of comics yet, but that's because there was a lot of early stuff that happened in the golden age and I figure it would be really, really important to talk about the golden age first. So to get started, the end of World War II nearly marked the end of the superhero. With the Axis forces eliminated as the menaces, the number of superhero titles lessened. Sidebar, the Axis forces were two major groups of nations that were fighting in World War II, and they were Germany, Italy, and Japan. So, publishers began to go out of business, and the publishers that survived started writing new genres of comics, like funny animals, western stories, horror, crime, romance, and science fiction. The sales of all the new stories were lucky to reach half of the readership that was generated through World War II. And common themes also began to change due to post-war America. There was a fear of nuclear war and the spread of communism, which, sidebar again, communism is a political theory advocating class war and leading to a society where all property is publicly owned and each person works and is paid according to their abilities and needs. So comics reflected their audience's awareness of both of these fears, and actually the cover of Captain Marvel Adventures, which was in 1946, depicts a hero standing amid a city that has been destroyed with warheads sailing his way, with the blur proclaiming Captain Marvel battles the dread atomic war. Following this comic, Superman, Fighting Yank, and other superheroes also lamented nuclear warfare, while non-heroes such as Atomic Man, Atoma, Adaman, and the Atomic Thunderbolt supported it. I know a lot of those superhero names sounded the same, and it was probably because of the fear of the atomic war, they just put it in the name. So radiation spawned the monsters became a reoccurring theme in comics in the 1950s. So like Plastic Man fought giant ants or Batman and Robin were plagued by giant bees, which sounds very silly. So Marvel Comics, which canceled its superhero comics in the late 1940s, resurrected Captain America, the Submariner, and the Human Torch as commie busters, which were parodies in the early 1950s. But by the mid-1950s, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman continued to star in their own titles, but a real-life menace came and endangered them further. That menace was Dr. Frederick Wortham, a psychologist who wrote a book called The Seduction of the Innocent, which explained how comic books were causing juvenile delinquency and moral decay among youth. And this was a threat to the comic book's end, and this made the comic book industry create the Comics Magazine Association of America, the CMAA, and they immediately went to work adopting the self-censoring Comics Code Authority, was the CCA. And there are 41 standards that describe strict editorial guidelines for depicting things such as crime, horror, and violence within comics. And even though the comic book industry had good intentions in pursuing a path of self-censorship, a lot of comic book publishers went out of business or canceled entire lines of books in the 1950s. The companies that remained open, which was DC, dumbed down their stories in an effort to meet the requirements of the code. And sales of comic books shrunk even more as parents forbid their children from reading the comic books. And this was comic books' darkest hour. So now I'm going to be showing you guys Batman's origin story so you can learn a little bit more about where Batman came from. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the next lesson. Bye bye I'm Batman. Batman initially appeared in 1939's Detective Comics number 27 as a full-fledged crime fighter. Although we were made to know that his secret identity was Gotham billionaire Bruce Wayne, we did not learn how he became Batman until issue 33 that same year. As it turned out, the story of the Caped Crusader all began one fateful night when Bruce and his parents were walking home from a movie. Held up by a robber, the criminal proceeded to murder both of Bruce's parents in front of his eyes. In the aftermath, Bruce swore an oath that he would spend the remainder of his life waging a war on crime to avenge the deaths of his parents. Bruce would spend the next several years preparing for his new career, becoming a scientific criminal investigations expert while training his body for the immense physical task. 
Now mentally and physically prepared to take on the seedy criminal underbelly of Gotham, Bruce determined that he needed a disguise in order to strike terror into the hearts of criminals. At that exact moment, a bat flew through the open window, inspiring Bruce to make that his symbol. The figure in the dark was my destiny. I would use its image to strike terror into the hearts of those who did evil. I would ensure what happened to me would never happen to anyone else again. I would have my revenge. Over the years, Batman would come to team up with police commissioner James Gordon, his loyal butler Alfred, and would eventually take on his trusty sidekick, Robin, another tragically orphaned youth. You can't understand. Your family wasn't killed by a maniac. Yes, they were. In time, he eventually discovered that a small-time crime boss named Joe Chill was the one who killed his parents. Disguising himself as a seagull in the water to avoid being seen, seriously, we're not kidding, Batman snuck aboard Chill's boat. Cornering Chill, Bruce Wayne removed his mask to reveal that he was the boy that was left orphaned by the criminal. Against killing himself, Bruce let Chill go, but told him that he would be watching his every move, and when Chill eventually made a mistake, he would be there to arrest him. A terrified Chill tried to get his fellow thugs to assist him, but when he told them that he had killed Batman's parents, they murdered him, blaming him for creating Batman. The death of Chill brought some closure for Bruce, but he would continue to fight crime and to protect Gotham. However, soon a new breed of criminal and psychopath began appearing in Gotham, including the Joker, who would become Batman's arch nemesis. Kill you. You idiot! You made me. Batman would constantly save Gotham from the Joker and other villains like Ra's al Ghul, Two-Face, and the Riddler, but would also suffer crushing defeats, including having his back broken and the death of the second Robin. Jason. Like all comic book heroes, Batman has gone through numerous reimaginings. One of the most famous is Frank Miller's Batman Year One story arc. That origin story began with a 25-year-old Bruce returning home after 12 years abroad following the death of his parents. Are you coming back to Gotham for long, son? As long as it takes. I'm going to show the people of Gotham their city doesn't belong to the criminals and the corrupt. Soon enough, Bruce got into a brawl with a sadistic pimp and was arrested, but was able to break the handcuffs and return home to Wayne Manor, covered in blood. Bruce then made his way to the chair where his father once sat, haunted by the image of his dead parents, until a bat burst through the window. It was at this moment that Bruce decided that he would need to take on an alter ego in order to save the city from criminal scum. Although Batman has no supernatural powers, he possesses superior strength, fighting ability, and detective skills that allow him to hold his own against his massive rogues gallery. Being exceedingly wealthy, he also has a seemingly endless array of gadgets and vehicles, many of them Bat-themed, that give him the tactical edge on his adversaries. One of the most famous and popular comic book heroes, Batman has appeared in various media, from live-action television to animated series, as well as films in both mediums. Over the years and different incarnations, Batman has been portrayed by many actors, including the likes of Adam West, Michael Keaton, the voice of Kevin Conroy, Christian Bale, and most recently, Ben Affleck in 2016's Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. Are you a fan of Batman? You truly are incorruptible, aren't you? <laughs>